you, Benjamin. I'm uh, very happy to be here. I think it's my third Wisha Fest in a row. Um, and so I'm, I'm very used to the audience and the angles that we're uh, discussing here together. Uh, I've prepared a few slides. I'm not sure if they're loaded already. Um, okay. So. Okay. So I, I wanted to share a few ideas, uh, um, tell a few words about entrepreneurial ecosystems. So our business at the family is to work with early stage ambitious entrepreneurs. And as a result, we've been uh, very interested in understanding what makes a successful and healthy entrepreneurial ecosystem. We've worked hard to understand what really makes a difference uh, from one city to another, from one country to another. And above all, we've been, um, we're frequently visited by people who are interested to understand that. And usually those people are entrepreneurs themselves, but usually uh, in other cases, they're from local government or from development agency. And what they ask us is, I'd like to have my own Silicon Valley back, back home. So can you help me design my own Silicon Valley uh, in my city or in my... Um, or in my country and what we systematically answer reply to that demand is that it's impossible you can't replicate Silicon Valley uh, for so many reasons uh, and at some point uh, the question was so frequent that we decided to write down a, an entire study to explain what explains uh, the success of Silicon Valley and what is it is so d difficult to replicate in another city. And so doing that, I had to learn a lot about the history of Silicon Valley. And believe me, it's not a, uh, an e easy thing because Silicon Valley itself is not very interested in its, in its own history. People uh, travel to Silicon Valley, settle there to found startups or to invest in startups. They're not really interested in the past. They're more interested in uh, in the future and above all the present, what we can do today uh, by, with harnessing the power of technology. And so, uh, understanding the, the history of Silicon Valley demands that you read a lot of books uh, that are not that well known, not easy to find, a lot of articles. And we read so many things, so many things at the family about that, that, that we've come out with a framework that tries to explain why Silicon Valley works so well for entrepreneurs, and what are the key institutions that make a successful entrepreneurial ecosystem. So I like to think in terms of institutions, uh, uh, it's a difficult term because w when people hear institutions, they usually hear the Constitution of the United States or uh, the European treaties and so on, but an institution can be a rule uh, more discreet, uh, an unwritten rule, a, a custom, a local custom, all that are institutions and all that explains that it's easy to found startups and to su succeed in Silicon Valley. So what are the key institutions of an entrepreneurial ecosystem? The first, uh, there are five of them, so I will go through them very uh, quite quickly. The first institution is very important, is uh, rewarding entrepreneurship. If you're in a city, in a certain location, you, and, and you explain around you that you want to become an entrepreneur, there are many places in the world where people will say, oh, are you sure? It's, it'll be difficult. Uh, go find a real job. You, you'll have no money, so for, forget that project, etc. There are very few places in the world when, when you explain that you want to be an entrepreneur, people are excited, want to support you, offer uh, help and resources and so on. And so you have that in Silicon Valley, uh, and now you have that in more places in the world because the entrepreneur has, a, has emerged as a, as a fascinating figure, and you can see that. Uh, we all saw that when Steve Jobs died because suddenly everyone uh, 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 claimed uh, admiration and fascination with entrepreneurship. So that is the first institution. Is entrepreneurship highly regarded? In, a certain, in that particular city? If yes, well, it's on its way to becoming a healthy ecosystem. The second institution is about ambition and hard work. There are many people, including here in Paris and including in Europe, who proclaim to be entrepreneurs. But in fact, when you try to understand what they're really doing, 
they're doing consulting business, they're operating a small web agency, they're developing websites for clients. That is not entrepreneurship. And the fact that those people say that they're entrepreneurs is because they think that it's cool to be an entrepreneur, that it projects a better image of themselves. But in fact, they are not entrepreneurs. They're operating business services and their, their business will never scale to a global scale and will never dominate its market. So uh, a very important institution is the pressure that is exerted by the ecosystem. If you claim to be an entrepreneur, then you have to live up to, your, to a very high ambition. And if you don't, you'll be kicked out of the ecosystem because entrepreneurship is not for non-ambitious uh, uh, founders of web agency. Not that I don't like web agencies, but it's not, um, it's not technology entrepreneurship at all. The third institution is about the institution, the resources that are here to cover high risks. Uh, a key difference between the traditional economy and the digital economy is that in the digital economy, the larger the company, the more risks it has to take to survive and to, to keep on dominating its market. And so that explains that a lot of startups usually die after their so-called Series B. They succeed at the, uh, in seed stage, they raise a Series A, they keep growing, they raise a Series B, and in Series B, they die. They die because they couldn't find enough resources to fuel their exponential growth past the um, past product market fit. Uh, they encountered obstacles like regulatory obstacles that prevented them from, uh, from scaling up their business model or they could, couldn't hire talent, etc. So if the, the resources lack to cover the high risks that must be taken when a startup is growing very fast, reaching for global domination, then you are not in a healthy ecosystem. Fourth institution is talent moving around. There are many places in the world, including Detroit here. Uh, Detroit was very, for a long time, was very prosperous. But the major difference between Detroit and uh, Silicon Valley at that time was that in Silicon Valley, engineers moved from company to company because there, there was uh, labor law, the local labor law, made it possible, made it impossible for an employer to retain uh, an employee willing to go work for the, for the competition. Whereas in Detroit, uh, the non-competition clauses are very important and prevent the engineers from going from one uh, car company to another car company. And that explains in part why Detroit has, not, has never been an entrepreneurial city because when a company grows large it, and is able to retain uh, its uh, engineers and innovators not because it's innovating more but because of Le, uh, constraining labor law, well, that is bad for entrepreneurship because people can, cannot go out and found their own company. They cannot go out to work for an entrepreneur, a comp, an entrepreneur trying to compete. And so that is not a healthy ecosystem. And the fifth and last institution is about migration. So a very important signal when it comes to entrepreneurial ecosystem is do they attract people from the outside? It's a very uh, it's a revealing sign that, uh, for, that a city is an entrepreneurial ecosystem if people want to move there and settle there to, um, to start something. Except there are rich and prosperous cities like New York where people want to go not to found a new company but to join existing companies. And uh, as I say, when, when a successful investment banker in, on Wall Street in New York receives a young a migrant willing to work in finance, he doesn't, what he usually offers is, what they usually offer is, um, well, you should, you should work for me. And so I have a seat right, right there behind the desk and you can begin trading by tomorrow. In Silicon Valley, it's different. When a young person comes to Silicon Valley and meets a, a successful local entrepreneur, the entrepreneur will not offer to hire that person they will offer to help founding a startup. So yes, I can provide, I can give advice. Yes, I can invest in your startup. Yes, I can give you tips what you should do to succeed at the early stage. 
that is a very important sign. So do newcomers prefer to join existing companies or to found their own startups? So if you have the five institutions, then you are successful entrepreneurial ecosystems. Some ecosystems have only two or three of them. Um, I, I, we could discuss later about Europe, especially Paris or London or Berlin. Uh, the problem with institution is that it, it sounds easy when I explain it, uh, at least I hope, but you cannot create institution from, from the ground. You, can, you cannot build them in a day. An institution is not something that you design and parliament enacts a new bill and then the institution exists. The institutions, is, institutions are always the result of struggle, fighting, ex, uh, extreme Darwinian selection, etc. And so it takes time, it takes tension, it takes sometimes violence to impose institutions. And that explains why you cannot replicate Silicon Valley, because what you observe in Silicon Valley is the, the, the result of a long and conflicting process. And, and so you need the same kind of conflicting and the same kind of time to, uh, to install those institutions in other cities. And so I call it, um, it it's kind of terraforming the ecosystem. As, as a conclusion, I should mention that the reason, um, because it takes time and because it takes uh, um, denouncing the status quo and it takes revolutionary, uh, a revolutionary mind, it's usually entrepreneurs who start building the institutions themselves without uh, asking for help uh, with the local government or large corporations. And so what a city should do if it wants to become a successful entrepreneurial ecosystem is to understand what are the key institutions that are needed, but uh, never try to build them themselves. The city officials should look for the local entrepreneurs and push those, those entrepreneurs so that they feel the reward, they feel, uh, they feel more ambitious, and they start building the institutions themselves. So that's my conclusion. Thank you for your attention.